Good morning everyone, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here, week 31 of lockdown cooking. I think that's something like right. And this week we've had loads of questions during the week, which is brilliant. So we're gonna cover some of those later on. Uh, we've also got our competition. So we put up an Instagram feed, uh, Instagram story thing about the new rubs, the new, new Let's Q rubs. So we have winners, we pick those. So we'll let you know who they are. We'll do that probably at the end, just to keep you hanging on. Um, and we've got three cooks. So as you know, one of them's gonna be uh, gyoza, which are um, Japanese dumplings. Um, I was lucky enough to have them when I was over in Japan. Was it last year? I had to go up, part of my job, uh, one of my jobs is aeronautical engineering. So I was over there um, visiting a large, aer uh, large um, uh, electronics manufacturer who manufacture a product we sell. So uh, yeah, very lucky, got to go skiing, got to eat gyoza in Han Hakuba, which is one of the great ski resorts. So that was fabulous. So we're gonna do gyoza. I've never done them before this week, but um, been practicing and they've come out really well. So, uh, and I know Carlos and Johnny, hopefully they're on. Um, so Carlos, uh, my golfing partner, buddy, uh, but Johnny, his son, is a big fan apparently. So uh, Johnny, these are for you. Um, so we've got gyoza. We're gonna do some cauliflower, uh, a vegetarian dish. So. The whole point of this week, I guess, is around Christmas and Christmas nibbles and just getting you ready for those sorts of things. So um, the gyoza are a good, a good nibble to have. Uh, the cauliflower dish is a post-Christmas when you're feeling this fat and you've eaten that turkey and all of that. It's a, a dish just to make you feel a bit better about yourself, uh, but it is absolutely scrummy. It's one of our favorites in this house. And we're also gonna do uh, a snack. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because we're gonna do a little, you're gonna see if you know what it is. Anyway, as per usual, on camera, Morning. in the freezing cold, but not raining, yes. uh, in the freezing cold is Andy. Uh, so Andrea, I should say, she doesn't like being called Andy. We all call her Andy. We'll call her Porg, person of restricted growth. That's what we all call her. Thanks. Yeah, because <laughs> she's so little, <laughs> tiny, lovely. And then we've got Helena, uh, as usual. Morning doing the live feed so uh, she'll be typing and taking all your questions and then somewhere inside we've got mama who's looking down at the thing but she'll probably look up in a second and wave maybe not she's a bit behind us obviously um anyway <laughs> so i'll hand you back to andy i've handed it back wrong way around yeah thanks she's got it now <laughs> she's waving now <laughs> too late too late um right so we're going to do uh three those three things so let's just i've started and i've only started one thing this week so we have just some cauliflower all i've done is core it uh, we've got some the florets and we've popped them in there and all i've done to these and i'll do it now a little bit more a little bit of oil on them not much because you don't want it to flare up and then we're going to put some rub on them so i'm just going to put some didn't see that didn't take that the the, the bit out god look at that there you go it's falling out now trying to drag it out of my finger I'll put the oil on it um, but we're going to put a tiny bit of rub on them this is just an all-purpose rub just to give them a bit of seasoning um, now we in the past we've done it with buffalo um, buffalo sauce just drip it on um, but the girls aren't great fans of the buffalo sauce so we're gonna we've done it and the last time we did it we did it with the all-purpose all rub and it works really well so I've got this spinning at uh, using the Let's Q at 180 degrees. If you haven't got a Let's Q, don't panic. You can just roast them, put them in a tin, put your convector in their feet up, stainless steel grid, put a, a baking tin, put your cauliflower in there and just roast it. Um, this is gonna take about 30 minutes at 180 degrees C. Um, it's the same for roasting and for uh, tumbling. So uh, you'll see this will come back. It was about 180 before I opened it. It's lovely and warm, it's a cold day. Um, so. Um, but yeah, so that's the cauliflower going on there. In this egg over here, we are going to cook the gyoza. Um, so let's, uh, some of you may have seen them, some of you may not, but let's just, um, we're gonna start from scratch, make a few uh, and show you how that goes. So, perfect. As per usual, ask your questions um, as, it go, as we go along. So I've got a little bit of leftover in there, so I'm just gonna add to it. Um, so we have, some pork mince. Um, I buy the 20% fat stuff because I think the fat gives it a bit of flavor. Don't buy the 5% flat fat stuff. You're not getting any flavor in there. So 20% fat pork mince going in. 
and then to that we're going to add um, uh, this is just hispy cabbage um, you can steam it if you want I put it in raw so I've just chopped it up nice and fine so you can see it's like uh, small so we put that in um, so this is one of those sweetheart cabbages or hispy cabbage is its other name um, we're going to put in some uh, one this is um, but the recipe calls for two and that's because I've done half of it already so this is one um, shiitake mushroom I just deep I buy, buy the um, freeze-dried ones so that's just been rehydrated this morning and chopped up we are going to put into there some uh, one but the recipe is two because this is you know we're doing half again um, two spring onions just chopped up nice and fine to give it a bit of oniony flavor get that in we've got ginger and garlic and again I'll publish the recipe later today so you'll be able to make this whoops throwing the garlic away or the ginger away chopped up nice and fine so that can go in and finally a bit of salt and pepper going in there tiny bit not a huge amount then key ingredient and I've put one of them over there somewhere I'll find it in a second some sake some uh, Italian uh, Italian <laughs> Japanese <laughs> Japanese sake so uh, uh, we'll put I'm gonna put normally it's a table a teaspoon um, I'm doing half because I'm making half of this today we're going to put in some sweet soy sauce and again same amount um, I say sweet because um, we did this in the week and we found it uh, we thought it needed a bit more um, sugar in it so you could put a teaspoon of sugar in it but I found in the um, supermarket sweet soy sauce so tried it it's lovely right now time to get your hands dirty um, feel like I'm missing something I am I'm missing sesame I'll put it there a little bit of sesame half uh, same again so it's a teaspoon a teaspoon a teaspoon of mirin of not mirin sake uh, sesame and soy uh, I'm doing half because I'm only making half so we've got that and then all you need to do is scrunch it together so this is the dirty bit. Whoops. Especially if you're like me. All right, just mix it up. Um, just, I just wanted to do this to show you how easy it is. Um, what we're not going to do is make thousands of these things. Um, no, you're all right. Um, we're not going to make thousands of these things because it's quite tedious. So, right, that's mixed up. Um, and it smells delicious by the way it smells really um, Asian spices and so on so I'm just going to wash my hands so are there any questions Helena? Uh, we... not at the moment right so we'll cover some of the ones we had this week so uh, I had a question um, from a new egg owner um, asking um, sorry you probably can't hear me over the water but I had a question from a new egg owner how, asking how to clean the soot off their dome um, if you look at the dome in here, it's black. You don't clean it. Never clean the inside of your egg with any water or anything like that. The, the best thing you can do is, is warm it up, get it hot and it will burn off most things. It'll always be black. And then every so often, just brush it down with a dustpan and brush when it's cold. Um, so yeah, no need to get the soot off there. Um, that's the way, it, the way it works. So yeah, just inside of your egg, never put water in there, never try and clean it. Um, your stainless steel grid you can if you want put it in the dishwasher or clean it in the thing in the in the sink um, anything cast iron don't do that you just uh, uh, you uh, it, it will go rusty um, it will go like this I think we showed you this one last week um, and by the way this one here still a bit too hot to pick up um, I was just um, looked very much like that one did very rusty about 20 minutes ago um, all I've done as I as per the videos, that spider's still in there. Um, just, uh, just a bit of oil. Just wipe it on. Wipe off the worst of the rust with aluminium foil. Bit of oil on there, and then bake it, and it will go back to black. Isn't that an Amy Winehouse song? <laughs> That's not bad for me. Right, Goza. Right, you can get these from uh, any Asian supermarket. Um, even Amazon do them, and these are gyoza wrappers. Basically, they're really thin um, bits of dough, and they've been rolled out, 
and they're perfect for making gyoza. So I'm gonna make two, so I'll take two out. Um, when you've opened the packet, um, when you finish with it, cling film it so it doesn't dry out, put it in an airtight box and put them back in the freezer and then you can keep them for next time. And you can unfreeze, freeze, unfreeze, freeze. There's no issue with that. So, so this is one of our gyoza wrappers. Um, I'll grab a teaspoon and all we're gonna do is grab a teaspoon, whoa, nearly blew away. Grab a teaspoon of the uh, meat. Grab a tiny bit more, but don't overdo it. Excuse me, Andy, I've just got to get my water that I've left over here. Right, I'll get my meat out of the way so you can see this. Um, so, teaspoon of the meat in the middle. Don't go too massive. Then with your finger, just put the water around the outside and that will help seal it just like you would do any pastry. And then we're going to fold it in half. And this is the tricky bit. You're going to crimp, hold it in the middle and then we're going to create a crimp down the back. So one fold, two folds, three folds on that side. And then I'll do the same. And I'm just pushing it into the middle. One fold, two folds, three folds down that side. And we've got a very pretty little dumpling. I'll do that once more. So teaspoon of the pork stuff in the middle, water around the outside, you can really see that going on because this one's floury, okay? And then we're gonna fold it in up to the middle. So pull the bits together and hold it. And then we're gonna do a fold, a fold, a fold. I don't, hopefully you can see that, what I'm doing and then squash them together. And then the same on the other side, a fold, a fold, fold now some people um, fold it all the same way but it doesn't look as pretty okay so when you've done that you've got your gyoza so I've got two there I think you only crimp one side you? yes you only crimp the back or the bit pointing towards you the other side remains flat and that gives it this curved shape and then you'll get a flat bottom as well uh, and that's just how they look so um, I had a whole plate of these well I shared a plate of these when we were in Japan and they were just delicious so I had to find out how to make them and in true blue Peter style here's some I've made earlier um, so we'll pop those two in the middle do have we do they do them with sweet fillings do you know? yeah these are these are pork so you could do them um, you could do them with other fillings so you can do vegetarian ones um, I've not seen them with sweet fillings but I've not looked so you you know possibly could so in here um, on the bottom of this pan, um, I've just put some um, ground nut oil. So it's got a bit of oil on, then I put these on the top. And now what we're gonna do is put them in and fry them. And what we're trying to do is get the bottoms to go a bit golden brown. And that's the first stage of this. So we'll get these in the egg. This egg is racing, so these will probably go quite quickly. Um, it's a windy day, so it's, um, and I cleaned it, so it's really hot. So we're gonna take these, pop them in, um, and that cast iron pan is just going. Oh, oh, I think we're back. Right, cast iron pan. Oh. Okay, can you ask Mama to cut? Yeah. Sorry, we're getting a poor connection, so we're just going to cut off our other devices. So, um, right, so hopefully you saw that. That's gone in there. It should be about 200 degrees. We want it um, uh, direct, so the bottom of that pan is going to. Uh, uh, the bottom of that pan is going to crisp up those gyoza um, but it's as simple as that and we're just going to fry them for a minute um, uh, so yeah that's where we're at right let's have another look at our cauliflower and see how we're doing oh that's looking nice right so what you can do if you've got your thermo pen or a skewer around just poke it and see if it's getting nice and soft so this is softening up. I'm going to say it's going to be another five or 10. That's fine. So we'll um, let that go for five or 10. So um, other, other questions and shout outs we had this week while those cook. Uh, Steve, the medic, barbecue medic, um, Steve, what's his surname, Eversfield, um, asked if we could just give a shout out. Um, he's a uh, controller for, uh, I've probably got that wrong. So sorry, Steve, it's off the top of my head, but uh, works with the St. John's Ambulance and wanted us to just give a shout out to St. John's Ambulance uh, 
with COVID. Uh, they've done about 250,000 volunteer hours already uh, helping with the COVID uh, thing, with the pandemic, with the helping ambulance and the, and the NHS, Trust. NHS Trust. Thank you, Helena. So we just wanted to give them a shout out. And of course, they think they're going to be helping with the virus rollout. So thank you for that. And again, 95%, I think he told me, of that work would be all voluntary. So that is brilliant. So shout out to the St. John's Ambulance. Um, who else have we got on there? We had uh, a couple of other questions. Uh, people were asking about spares and damaged parts this week. Yes, so we had spares and damaged parts. I've spoken to a couple of people who uh, are upgrading their egg, buying a new one, uh, whether it's replacing a really old one. One customer wanted to replace his 10 year old egg. Um, uh, somebody else was uh, upgrading from a medium to a large. Uh, and they both had cracked internal ceramic pieces they're covered by a lifetime warranty. So all you have to do is get in contact with and send photos of the cracks uh, to info at alfrescoconcepts.co.uk. Uh, the people who sold you your egg, as long as you're the original owner, that all the internal ceramics, except for the plate setter, have a lifetime warranty on them. So if you've got cracks, get in contact with them and they'll send you out replacements. It shouldn't happen. Um, so that's why you spend so much money on an egg. You get that brilliant customer service. So uh, yeah. Uh, do get hold of those guys. Uh, so the Lawrence brothers both oh, so we've got apparently we've got both the Lawrence brothers on. So Andrew and Neil, uh, probably some fighting going on on the on the talk. One up in Cambridge, one in Cambridge, and one up in York. So uh, always quite a lot of banter with those two. Right. Uh, any other questions? Do we have? There was something else, wasn't there? Uh, oh, someone asked about the size of a turkey on a roasted turkey. Oh yeah. So this morning, add. Um, uh, I gave a, a private cooking lesson to Ad and Steffi uh, and the, um, Steffi's dad, God, probably four or five years ago now. Um, Ad has a rotisserie and has seen the video that we put out a couple of weeks ago or last week with the turkey, spinning the turkey on here. It's a brilliant way of cooking the turkey. It, it worked out super, super moist. Um, uh, how big a turkey can he put on there? Well, it's got a fit on the skewer, but... Um, the skewer is rated for 15 kilos. You know, he's asking, could he do a six kilo turkey? Yes, he can. We cooked a 4.7 kilo turkey, absolutely no bother the other day. Um, and it probably was one of the best turkeys we've had. Agreed? Agreed. Perfect. Right, those two are cooking nicely. We'll come back to the, dump, uh, to the uh, gyoza in a minute. Right, snacks. Anyone know what those are? It's probably gonna be difficult to. Yeah. Can you zoom in? Can you see those? Mm. We'll give everyone a couple of minutes. Um, lovely snack. We love these. Um, would work really nicely around Christmas time, just after Christmas when the turkey leftovers are used for something. <laughs> this goes with them. So we thought we'd um, show you a few of these. So I'm going to grab my uh, Thermapen. If you have a look at this egg, um, set up, I should show you first, it's down at 130 degrees on the thermometer, okay? Uh, so, uh, just want you to see that. Inside we have a wok with oil, but the important bit is when I put this thermometer in the oil, can you see that? We're up at about 180 degrees, and that's because the bottom of the wok is sitting right by the fire. Uh, so um, it heats the oil up to the temperature you want. It's probably the safest way of deep fat frying um, in your house because if you, I mean, you're cooking with the lid shut. So if anything goes wrong, you just pull the lid shut, pull the bottom shut and it will snuff it out. And if you've got the lid open and you happen to have a fire, just shut it. And I have done it. I uh, walked away uh, earlier in the year um, I'd left the top open, put the oil on, walked away and wondered why the garden was full of smoke. Uh, it's because it was on fire. So all I did, pull the, put a glove on, pull the top shut, shut the bottom, job done. Uh, it went out, okay, the oil was a bit burnt, but um, anyway, we're at 180 degrees. Have we had anyone guess what they are? Yeah, so Steve Parsons has it got it right. Perfect. Um, prawn crackers. Um, if you go to a Chinese supermarket, I just thought this would be a bit of fun because most people haven't seen it, but go to a Chinese supermarket you can get a bag of tons and tons of these they were three pound 48 um, and what you do and this is you might want to look in now Andy just pop them into the oil 
Oh, it might not have got hot, hot enough. It will go. Oh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to see. Um, just starting to go. Might need to be a bit hotter, maybe 200. We tested it indoors, it worked at 180, but here they go. Okay, I've got a couple questions. Hang on, we're just going to get the first prawn cracker up. So, what you see is they pop to the top and then they open up. Simple as that. And if you want to get them really crispy, you can just hold them under a bit just to finish them off. But these are Thai style ones, so we'll take them out. I've got a bit of a kitchen towel in there, pop them in. I'll do a couple more just so you can see. Uh, put three or four in at once. Just watch your fingers when you do that. Come on. Yeah, probably 200 degrees. We were reading 180 when we did it indoors, but 200 would be fine. So your egg probably is gonna be at 150, but the oil will be at 200. And they take no time at all just to puff up, open out, <laughs> float to the top. And again, just pop them under. It just means if you pop them under, it'll get those last few bits that are at the edges. You don't want to bite into something that hasn't puffed up because it will be really crunchy. And then off you go. Straight into the thing, into there. I like those. I thought that was a bit of fun. So try it at home. Let me get, I'll grab one. Um, and these are Thai ones. So you can get normal prawn crackers, but these are Thai shrimp crackers. Um, Mm. break up nicely and they're best with I've got a bowl here <coughs> oh, a bit of sweet chilli sauce put it in the bowl I know Colin who lives around the corner and Julie would love these um, we used to go to a, um, a Thai pub and that was one of the starters Okay, I've got a couple of questions. Delicious. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands. Go for it, Helena. Question. Uh, so, someone has said that the black tip seems to be falling off their meter. If I push it back on, will that be okay? Um, no. Get in contact with meter. Um, they will look at your... Sorry, I'm looking at Helena. I don't know why I'm asking the question. So, black tip on their meter is falling off. Um, they uh, will... Um, check whether you've taken it over temperature. So if you've ever cooked and it's alarmed and you've left it and it's gone beyond temperature, they will check for that because um, if you've signed up to put your cooks into the cloud, they can see all of those. They will check for that. If you have taken it over temperature, um, it's not under warranty. Um, if you haven't taken it over temperature, um, they will um, uh, more than likely replace it. So go onto the meter website, go into support and go through um, all the questions and it will tell you uh, to raise a ticket. Uh, it takes about five days for them to respond, especially this week with Black Friday, so get in early. Uh, and they will, um, if it is a, a faulty meter, um, some, a lot of them are that that happens to, uh, or not a lot. I've had, I mean, I've sold hundreds of these. I think I've had four or five that have done that. Um, they will replace it. Um, one of them they didn't because uh, the customer had taken it way above the temperature it, it was um, supposed to be and the meter records that and, and will have recorded it to the cloud. So um, there's no getting out of that. If you cooked it, you cooked it. Sorry. Um, right, let's have a look okay. at these. Another question. Yeah. How much better are the new regulators compared to the old style? Okay, good question. So the question is, I'm going to pick one of these up with my hands, see what's happening. Can you see we've got nice and crispy on the bottom now? Okay, that's what we're looking for. So if you pick them up nice and golden brown, can you see that okay on the camera, mm -hmm. Andy? Yeah. Yeah? Um, so those are now cooking nicely. So I'm gonna do the next phase of this. So the next bit, take about a quarter of a cup of water. So I'm gonna pop that in. A little bit more. Little bit of water in there. And now I'm gonna get the lid. So that's why I was cleaning it earlier. Um, uh, just use a pan with a lid. So the T-fowl pans work. Um, I'm just using uh, this. You can put a plate over the top. But the idea is that you just steam it. So now those are in there and they're going to steam. So we're going to leave those to steam for about five minutes. 
Right, so question was, is this top, the regulator, uh, better than, I'm trying to see one, can't see, the daisy wheel one, I've got one somewhere. Um, there's no need to switch. When you do switch, uh, it will take you a long, a longish period to get used to this if you've already got used to the daisy wheel. Um, I use them on all of these, um, just so I'm learning them. I'm better at using the daisy wheel than I am this. Uh, the only difference is you can leave this on you don't have to take it off at the end of the cook and put the snuffer cap on the green snuffer cap I can see one of those oh, there's one. you don't need this anymore um, but we have both here for people who come to the cookery school um, so that they can uh, use one or use the other um, depending on what they've got at home so there is no desperate need for you to switch um, they both work perfectly so um, yeah just the old one uh, the daisy wheel just put a bit of oil on it every so often and when you finish cooking with it take it off the top and put it inside your egg and the heat will put that oil, will bake the oil onto it and it won't go rusty best place for it inside your egg and then put the snuffer cap on the top to put it out um, what you'll probably see is there's one there's a couple around here and they're all rusty as hell because I haven't put them inside I'm trying to see if I can climb on there here we go so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, this is the original um, style egg. Um, so it opened and it swiveled. Uh, and the swivel has these little holes here. Um, it's actually much easier to do fine control with this than it is the new one. Um, but we move on. So, right. Time to have a look at these. Need my pen back. Okay, how do you clean the new regulator? I'm going to get a bit of cloth and show you. Get a bit of cloth. Get your egg nice and warm. Open it right up and just wipe it. And then wipe under the bottom. And this one I know is particularly dirty because I was going to answer this later. Um, but yeah, just wipe under the bottom. Any fats that have... Uh, um, Uh, basically stuck on there you can just wipe them off and then you can shut it back up and it's like that if you find it's getting sticky when it's cold um, then do that because it won't stick so much I'm just gonna put that in the bin any other questions yes so mark from smoke fine foods um, uses the new caps and is loving them Shame they don't want to do one for the Mini. They do one for the Mini Max, just not the Mini. Um, you, last week we cooked on the Mini. Really small egg is one just over there. Um, don't sell it in the UK anymore. Um, but yeah, Mark's got one um, and travels with it a lot. They're soft, so perfect. So um, my uh, cauliflower's nice and soft, so I'm just gonna lift it off. And that's the beauty of this over the Joe Tisserie is you just lift it off. I'm gonna pop the basket down there. Um, just gonna turn my motor off lift this off put a glove on um, and what we're going to do now is set these up to bake them that would be delicious so I'll put that over there um, I need I'm going to set it up for indirect so I've got a plate setter in there I'm using the expander basket because it makes it easier so I can just lift it in that's going in there I'm going to put a baking stone on and give that a few minutes to warm up and then we're gonna bake all of that together. So I'm gonna leave it at 180. So I'm gonna open it up a bit. Um, when you are using the Let's Cube, because of these little, uh, where the spit goes in the sides, it lets air in and out. So you do need to shut the top a bit more. So I'm gonna open that. Plus I've put some cold stuff in. So we'll open that up. Let's have a look at our dumplings. So I don't wanna burn them or, and then we'll start putting together these. So. Can you see them? They've all puffed up inside. A bit more water in there. They've expanded. All that pork's cooking nicely. I might actually leave the top off now. I think they're, I'll give them, no, let's take the top off. They're cooked. They look cooked. I'll give it another minute just to let that water 
get in there, that steam get in there. Basically, you're just steaming them now. It's like putting them in the rice steamer. Um, you could do all of this on the hob, but it's just fun to do it outside on the, okay, on the egg. Can we have a shout out? Yes, shout out coming up. Shout out for George He. Shout out for George He. He's going to be three next week. Three? Three next week. George, happy birthday for next week. Um, hopefully you, you, you're egging already. Perfect. You get to eat it all. Perfect. Charcoal questions. Charcoal questions coming up. I'm just going to grab my drink. Uh, someone said what charcoal do you use? And Neil Long says, big, gray, big K in the background. Have you changed to charcoal, Nick? So I am a big fan of big green egg charcoal. Um, so we've always got big green egg here. We always cook with big green egg. Excuse me, cold makes my nose run, but it doesn't drip like Carlos. He's always got a drip on the end of his nose. Um, <laughs> I need a tissue. Yeah, shoot me for I'm that. A tissue. And Andy's got, oh yeah, she's yeah. fine. Um, so um, yeah, there is a, um, I'm currently testing some big K restaurant grade apple charcoal. There was an offer on, if you go back and look at the, um, on the website, um, I don't know if it's still on, it's nothing to do with me. Um, but I just tested this stuff out. I quite like it. It's a bit different. It's, there's no smoky flavour to it at all. Um, so a lot of people don't like the smoky flavour really of um, uh, the big green egg, normal charcoal. Um, big green eggs, uh, eucalyptus charcoal doesn't have much of a smoky flavour either. Um, so I've tried that. I really like that as well. Um, what I didn't, what I don't normally like about big K is I found when you cook on it, if you open your uh, egg you'll find the inside of your egg is covered in ash and probably so is your food um, so I've seen that quite a lot and I don't like that it doesn't happen with this apple stuff so um, yeah so charcoals out there there's all sorts of companies out there um, if you want to spend some really big money then the best stuff apparently is a company called Whittle and Flame um, I've not actually tried it yet so I should do um, but there you go. Right, I'm gonna take that off. I'm going to get my sesame oil now. You can't get the mini in the UK now. Right, and we're gonna put probably just a teaspoon, just drizzle on here, just over. And then we're gonna to continue to fry off that, um, just fry them off for a bit um, and just leave them like that. So another three, four, five minutes, something like that. Let me just wipe my hands. Have any other questions? Uh, not at the moment. Um, thank you to all of you who bought Let's Cues this week. We've been going out the door solidly this week. It's been very good. Christmas is definitely coming. Um, if you look on my website, there is a page with lots of ideas for if you're watching and your partner owns an egg. Um, you know, us egg people are really difficult to buy for because we have everything. That's why we've got an egg. Um, so there's a page up there that, with some ideas, some cookbooks that I recommend. Um, it's not all stuff I sell, it's just stuff that we like. So uh, uh, yeah, have a look at that. That went up this week. Um, so, right, this is now warming up. So let's start putting one of these together. So I'll bring these over. I haven't really thought through how I'm going to do this, but we'll work it out. It's been it. rumbled. Oh, look. Hopefully that's cooled down a bit, it has. Um, to clean these, these baskets, these are off Amazon. Um, I bought the non-stick non one, the stainless steel one, and I don't regret it at all. Um, slightly more expensive, but um, you can chuck it in the dishwasher. Everyone moans about how difficult these things are to clean because of this mesh. Chuck it in the dishwasher, it comes out perfect every time. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a second question about yeah. turkey on the rotisserie. Someone says, can you do a 6k turkey? So can you just repeat? Yeah, so question um, on the turkey on the rotisserie. Can you do a 6k turkey? Yes, you can. Uh, the rotisserie is, uh, should hold 15 kilos. It's, it's, it's um, rated to 15 kilos. What you do need to do is just try and get your turkey on at central. So you don't want to skewer at one at the top so that all the weight's hanging down because it will struggle to turn that. I can see Andy's getting cold already. <laughs> right. Let me just move a few things over. Right. 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 Right.
Um, these um, cauliflower fajitas. So buy yourself some wraps, try and get yourself the ones that are easy to open but resealable. Get your wrap, pop it on a plate. I'm just going to do it with my fingers. I'm going to get some cauliflower. I'm not going to grill them. Yeah, I'm going to grill it. I'm going to put it all back on. So get some cauliflower on there and then we're going to get some grated cheese. Um, if you want to put more um, seasoning on, you can. We're going to put some grated cheese over the top, over all our wrap. Now, if you're into spice, you can put some uh, some uh, jalapenos on. She's eating again. And we're going to put that back into the egg. Now, I don't know if this, this is hot enough on the bottom, but it, it should be all right. So we'll pop it back in. And you can get two or three around here if you're clever. Um, we'll pop that in for three or four minutes just to melt the cheese, rewarm up that cauliflower, and then we'll serve it with some uh, um, serve it with some guacamole and some salsa and some sour cream. Gyoza. Here we go. Let's have a look at the bottom of these. Oh, look at those, lovely and crispy. They're perfect. So, let's grab those out. I'll leave that on for now. We'll pop this over here. And pop that down there so you can see those. You can zoom in on those, Andy. Um, so someone else has asked, yep. is the Let's Q a better cooking method for the turkey than the roasting rack on the big green egg? So this is controversial. Is the Let's Q a better um, way of cooking your turkey than the normal way? Um, I'm not a fan of turkey um, normally. Um, I think it's overrated, can be a bit dry and so on. We did the turkey on here, it was a supermarket, it wasn't even 20 quid, I think it was 17 pound 50 frozen, 4.7 kilo turkey. And it's probably the best turkey I've had. Uh, and it was on the Let's Q. What I've said to people is go and buy a frozen turkey now and try it before Christmas so that you know which way you prefer. Um, cost you 17 quid, you've got Sunday lunch, Job done. How about that? Right. Last thing we're going to do. Um, we are going to make a little dip for these gyoza. So uh, I haven't got my, I'm going to guess it. I can't see it. Tablespoon measure, or teaspoon. I had one here. Doesn't matter. I'm going to guess it. So tablespoon ish of sweet soy sauce. You see it's a bit more blue. Here. Yeah, it's nice and blue peat. Um, tablespoon-ish of rice wine vinegar. Now, we thought about, if you like it sweet, maybe swap to mirin, um, but we're gonna go for a similar sort of amount of that. And then the special ingredient, which I can't see, there it is. Had to go and buy this from the supermarket. You can get this from Amazon as well. Um, it's chili oil, but it's a sesame infused chili oil and it's got a little pumpy thing on there so you don't want much probably two drips two or three drips I'll put four okay then we'll grab a fork whisk it up oh, it's getting windy it's getting windy and Andy's getting cold so there you go dipping sauce and when we had them in um, uh, Japan let's see if I can do it haven't done this probably going to regret it. Grab a plate, put it over the top. Oh. Yeah, watch this, fail <laughs> miserably. Oh, oh. It's a bit like doing a tart tatin. Yeah, pop it over. Oh, no, they're not the Yeah, you might want to unstick them first. <laughs> that didn't work. Anyway, oh, this one will work fine. Um, grab your thing, dip it in your dipping sauce. delicious you do one of these little dipping things per person by the way no double dipping and sharing sorry oh that's just oh, that's delicious. <laughs> sorry what am i gonna do just loosen them all a bit it's probably better with a set of tongs 
One sec. Press it on. Don't let me forget that other piece. There we go. Right, now we're good. Just do that, and then somebody can take these inside because I can see Mama's looking hungry in there. Yeah. Plus the fact she can't watch because we've stopped her watching because we thought that's what was. Oh, yeah. There we go. I lost one. Hang on. That would be Helena's. Get that in there. Look at those bad boys. That is what I call a triumph. Okay, so that's our gyoza. And then hopefully, gyoza, oh, bit, bit of dipping sauce. Yeah, we'll go with it. Needs a little bit more, but for the sake of this, we'll go with it. We'll pop that on. And then, now these obviously, you're not supposed to have these two dishes together. Um, I suppose you could, but, and then we've got it with a bit of salsa. I need a, oh, a spoon. A little bit of salsa. The recipe for this is on the website. Bit of guacamole. Recipe for this is on the website. And if it's defrosted, because we froze it the other day, well, it's still a bit solid in the middle. Just ignore that. Um, we'll split a little bit, but a um, bit of sour cream. And then you can fold it over and then chop it up. You can do, or you can have it like that. It's up to you. Anyway, so those, uh, that is, I'll put a knife over the top. Do you want to send that in to mama? Yeah. At least she's got something to eat. You can take the dumplings in. Right, sending those in. We'll clear up here in a minute. So, uh, competition, let's do that. Um, so we had, uh, we've just started stocking these. Uh, Let's Q uh, started out a business as a, well, started out as a um, European barbecue team. So I used to compete on the circuit um, and um, they uh, invented the rotisserie. I've, I've now become the UK uh, distributor for it. Um, so I've taken their rubs as well. They're pretty good. Um, so try them. Um, anyone who's buying a Let's Q at the moment, I'm trying to remember to put a sample pack in there. Um, don't always remember. So if you've had a Let's Q and it's not had a sample pack in, shout at me and I'll send you one. But um, um, So we put up for uh, a competition, two people to, one person to like our Instagram, tag somebody and follow. And after, I think the winners are Helena. She's eating. <laughs> winners are picked number 19 of 20 we put a random number in number 19 of 20 was ben slater farming ben slater farming and his partner in crime reuben clover reuben clover so um i'll be sending four of those each out to you guys so um i'll contact you if you can send back your uh uh addresses i'll send them out okay so we did make a little photo of it well you made a little photo of it. you said that the Rolling out the virus, I think you meant the vaccine. The vaccine, sorry. <laughs> but someone <has> said, <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. Someone has said, uh, can they buy cooking classes at Christmas or are we still waiting for the Ambulance to stop spreading the virus? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, I don't know if you heard that. So, uh, yeah, are we selling cooking class vouchers at Christmas or are we waiting for St. John's Ambulance to stop spreading the virus? Because I, I meant giving vaccine. So, uh, sorry about that. Oh, God. That's going to look terrible now. They were going to use it as well. Um, <laughs> might have to redo that bit. Sent at John's Ambulance. Brilliant note. <laughs> anyway. Um, um, are we going to do put cooking classes up? No, we don't know when we are going to be able to reopen. And uh, what I did promise to those people who had classes this year uh, was that we would open the classes up to them first. Um, so when, as soon as we've got dates, they will go out to those people who we had to cancel. Uh, they will have a week and then we will launch the classes to everyone else. Um, you can buy gift vouchers on my website, um, but I won't, for the people who bought them last year, 
um, I've extended them a year um, because of this, but I won't extend them again. So uh, if you're not, if you buy a voucher for a class uh, uh, and you're not able to get on a class because this year's people fully book, then you can use it to buy it, buy rubs or a let's queue or whatever else, or a new new egg or something like that. Um, we'll work that bit out. There's a bit of um, uh, pushback. People saying, why don't you do some Zoom classes or virtual? yeah we tr so mm. people like to zoom or virtual um maybe we'll do that in the spring if we're not open um uh, we tried a zoom class uh, with five families it was chaos um try it's like herding cats trying to get um <laughs> if you're all trying to cook at the same time it is you know you need somebody there with you who is your camera person to move around as you move around it and they is, can't afford me <laughs> <laughs> it's it's chaos um and, and then people don't listen and um anyway uh, nice. are they nice yeah. <laughs> she's eating the <laughs> anyway so um it's something we will consider um we actually did a, a, a cooking class last night with thermomix so you've seen me use my thermomix and um, they did a christmas cooking class last night um we did it um, I learned a lot from that um, about how I wouldn't want to do it. Sorry, Thermomix. Um, there were just uh, there must have been 100, 60, 100 people on it. It was, yeah, chaos. Um, so, yeah, we'll look at it. So um, I do want to get the classes back out there, but in the meantime, we'll continue doing these. They're free. You can learn. And I can see Andy's getting really cold. She's shaking now, so the camera's probably going like that. Um, so, yeah. Anything else, Helena? No, but there is a lot of love for doing some virtual classes. So a lot of love for virtual classes. Look, apparently, the class we did was really fun. Everyone loved it. Uh, they did enjoy it, but it, <laughs> I walked out of it. I've drained. I mean, to be fair, it was on Easter Sunday, wasn't it? Or Easter Saturday or something like that. And we'd already done a live cook for Big Green Egg, and it was our first live cook. We'd done that. We had about a two hour break and then we went in, or not even two hours, and then we went into a, a, a two or three hour class with all these families and it was just chaos. I think if we do do Zoom classes, they'll be fairly short. Um, uh, and maybe we'll tailor, tailor those. Um, you know, it's really difficult. And you probably, you all know this, you, you all sit in front of Zoom all day, every day, probably. Um, I don't have to do that, uh, uh, but I know Helena does. And I see she comes out absolutely zapped from it so we'll keep them fairly short if we do that um, okay yeah anything else Helena uh, or are we we are a little bit over today that's 40 plus minutes perfect um, so thank you again for watching uh, well done Ben Slater farming and Reuben Clover I think I've got that right um, I'll get those out to you this week final I can't, I can't hear you. She's probably saying you're not supposed to. <laughs> Final shout out anyway for St. John's Ambulance. I can't hear what she's saying, but for St. John's Ambulance. Um, brilliant work, quarter of a million volunteer hours already. Um, gonna be helping with the vaccine rollout. Again, it'll be 95% of you know, volunteer work. St. John's Ambulance, thank you so much. Um, and of course, everyone else who's um, helping in this weird time, so. Um, next week we will try and get back onto some of the things we talked about doing before although I keep coming up with new ideas and, uh, uh, and doing those but we'll, we'll see what it is but if you've got any ideas you want to see us see again submit them and we will see you next week thank you for watching